for burning up too? Hmm, because they make them at the same factory. But if we had a better, like, vision of, well, let's go make our own shoe. But I think we're so afraid of taking risks with each other because we don't see each other as my brother. We see each other as competition. Mm. I'm telling you, I see brothers all day at the car wash. Brother, that's a nice car. He don't know where to draw. Look, <laughs> he don't know where to pull his pistol out. <laughs> or be like, man, he couldn't even really say thank you because he didn't even, he's like, Oh, well, thank you, my brother. I'm like, yeah, man, that's a nice car. And I just went back to, you know, cleaning out, vacuuming my car. And then he started to be like, man, but I want another car. This is the car I really want. But he was so hesitant because we see each other as competition. He said, what do all men with power want? More power. See what I'm saying? So if they can establish a dominion and keep their foot on Kyrie's neck, no other NBA player will speak out. That's why... LeBron, me and you won a championship together, but you see, he went out there and started talking bad about Kyrie. You see how people do? Why don't you just say, I have no comment? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, you think what he said was wrong? I have no comment. Well, right, right, wrong for wrong. Do I agree with the comments that the interviewer was saying to Kyrie? Not really. But what he done, he didn't say not a word. And then they attacked him with all these questions. But you got other people that basically answer the questions for him that he didn't even answer by you bringing that more up to the light. That was my whole ordeal with like Shaq and LeBron and Charles, whatever. That's all I'm saying. Yes, and you know, um, Jared mentioned earlier about um, with Steph. I don't agree with Steph in there. I called him out last year about the vaccination joint. He just a punk as them. So like, I don't, I don't pick sides. Even though you no know, Steph is my favorite player, but outside of basketball, he's corny. He don't, he don't stand by. He don't stand by us. He stand by himself. I've been saying that's his last year since the vaccination joint. So he's he's ex out. As far as that situation goes. Like he he's irrelevant. And the reason why they're not gonna ask him that, because he not a, he wasn't a teammate of Kyrie. He wasn't a teammate. You know what I'm saying? Like so yes, they're gonna ask LeBron and KD because they were the two big names that was actually playing for his team and they know it's gonna spark them. Rather they say something or not, they know it's gonna trigger something. And by them saying a word or anything, it's just gonna play more to or what they their decision is towards him. So that was my whole, that's the whole ordeal or the reason why I spoke on it. Like, damn, bro, like, LeBron, you even have to say anything, really. Like, you smart enough to know they're going to ask you these questions. You smart enough to know what you say is going to affect him regardless. You know that. How many times they ask you a question and you dance around the questions about you flopping, about you, you know, losing the wings, about you and Michael Jordan and all that. You good at dancing around questions. All of a sudden, you want to dance about that question about another man. That's that's my whole ordeal. And my, and my challenge to LeBron, I'm going to need you to really read the autobiography of Malcolm X and not just use that so you can keep black fans. Like, I'm really reading this book <laughs> and I'm busy. I actually have a real job, but I don't want to see you with a autobiography of Malcolm X, and I know you ain't read. He know he didn't read it. If he had read it, um, he would have made a type of Malcolm X type of decision when it was time to stand up. That's Malcolm X was a stand up guy. Malcolm X was misunderstood. He would have recognized that. Companies like Nike, Gucci, Target, Walmart, the Jews are tied into it. They consistently violate and disrespect us this is known they show mm -hmm. me and then they're going to have the nerve to want us to come out the day after thanksgiving and purchase every single item from their companies they got the nerve to turn around and call it black friday what do you guys think about boycotting black friday instead of purchasing from these other companies other groups buy black buy, buy black because we just uh, making the white people rich by um, buying stuff. So what I started doing, I started um, there's a lot of black owned stores where you could get custom made clothes. I started wearing their stuff because I, I'm not going to sit here and encourage the white people to continue doing this to our kids. They just ruining our life and we're giving them their the money to do it. So we need to stop and go on strike. That's right. And start buying a black. That's why I bought that book. That's a black a professor. Yeah. I agree with my sister. 
I'm gonna be real with y'all. I never really cared about Black Friday as a whole. Me either, but I'm I just saying. never, you know. <laughs> so, but still, I agree with my sister. I say with my sister, uh, I think we need to take more pride in the stuff that we do when we make. They it. didn't really know what they were doing, and they weren't very knowledgeable about it. Um, they thought they understood, but they come to, um, they regret. They come to a, a stage of regret. I'm not talking about those blacks. We can still function with those people. I'm talking about the people like a LeBron James who had a, a Malcolm X book in his hand, knowing he never read it from cover to cover, lied and said he read it from cover to cover, knowing that there is youth watching you. So when the youth see that you lied about reading a black leader, they're going to do the same. When they look and see how you were at these Jewish leaders, you were at their wedding parties and everything, but you couldn't sit down to read them, to talk about Malcolm X, one of the greatest leaders that this, this that the black race ever produced. And if you sat down and read that Malcolm X book, then you understood that he, he, spoke, a, he spoke highly about Elijah Muhammad. So now you're learning about Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad, and Malcolm X also spoke about Marcus Garvey. He spoke about how his dad was a Garveyite, how his parents were Garveyites. His mother wasn't foundational, but his father was. But he even spoke about how his mother transported her mind to being foundational. She didn't really identify with the overseas type of mentality. She wanted to identify with the folks here who are making stuff happen here. You would have been learning about Marcus Garvey, Elijah Muhammad, and the life of Malcolm X. And the, the, actually they have a show about it now with the grandfather of Harlem. Malcolm X spoke about that brother too. So we would, you would have, it's kind of like a historic, historical book and it's a plan, but you lied about it. Not only that, you stood up there, you sat, you sat up there knowing that you didn't look at the movie from Hebrews to Negroes and he said it, I didn't see the movie and I didn't read the book. So why are you making comments on Kyrie? That's because you know, you know who pay your check and it operates in a chain. The same people who pay Shaq's check, uh, Kanye's check, they pay Kyrie's check. So when you say, yeah, we got an answer for what this idiot has to, what this idiot had to do, because you're mad because he's messing up your money. We can't save everybody. What we have to do, we have to look towards liberation because we got children riding on this. We got children we have to raise. And if we don't take this stand right now, our children are gonna be enslaved. We have to do this because this fight is gonna take a decade probably. But we gotta fight in order for our children to be liberated so that we can be one people again. With the Montgomery bus boycott, the people in Montgomery, Warren G, they weren't worried about people in New York. They didn't even know what was going on with folks in New York. They wasn't saying, well, you know what? We got folks in LA and in Georgia. We got to make sure they come along with us. They said, yo, we here in Montgomery. We got to make it happen here. We can't, we can't bring everybody else on. We making this happen here. When they boycotted for 366 days, black businesses came out of the boycott. They didn't even mean to do that. When they went into the boycott, they didn't say, oh, you know what, we're gonna start the, we're gonna open up our own business and taxis and buses, bus lines and taxis and uh, food lines. They didn't do all that. Along the line is when it happened. And they said, we got something with this. That's when the white said, oh, okay, we gotta welcome you guys in. Right? Integration, we all good, right? Although we're not going to segregate the schools yet. I mean, the NAACP, they backing us up, right? And they got Jews. We all one people. We're colored folk. It's just like what Yomo Kenyatta said. At the beginning, we had the land. They had the Bibles. They taught us how to pray. And after they said, hey, after we said amen, they had the land. We had the Bibles. We became the slaves. They became the slave owners.